Hey everyone, in today's video I'm sharing four fun and easy to use math warm ups that you can use at the beginning of your math block to review in spiral old skills. Now I have shared some of my other favorite math warm ups before in a video like this one right here. And I've also expressed before that I always use a math warm up to start off my math block. These math warm ups only take about five minutes and it's just such an easy way to spiral other skills no matter what we are working on. So whether we've been working on place value for three weeks at a time, I can use that math warm up to review addition, subtraction, number sense, shapes, anything else. So in today's video, I wanted to highlight four of my favorites. So let's just get started. Give this video a like, subscribe to my channel. Let's go. warm up is a simple one and it is called four corners. Now I'm guessing many of you have played this game in your classroom before, but as a math example for this, I would simply bring all my students over to the rug and show them that I have four different cards in each corner of our room. For this example, let's say we have a card that says 10, 15, 20, and 25. I would then simply hand out different index cards to my students with different addition equations on them, and they would have to figure out which corner their card belongs in, and they will have to go walk there. Now this, of course, is a very simple activity, but there are a few ways you might want to switch it up. Students could definitely do this independently, and I would always give them a few minutes to solve their problem, or not a few minutes, maybe a minute, depending on how difficult the problems are. But you'd give them some time to look at their card independently first and solve it while they look around the room, so that way when you say go, they can stand up and walk to their correct spot. You can also have students do this with a partner, so they might have to solve it together. I like to do that if the skill that you're reviewing is particularly new. So if students just started working on double digit addition, you may wanna have them work with a partner to do this. Now, once students go to their corners where they think they belong, I do let them know that the corner they're in, they are in charge of checking everyone else at their corner. So when the time is up, you can run this on a timer, you can give them however much time you want, but when that time is up and everyone should be at their corners, you are supposed to work together as a team to make sure that everybody belongs there. Another thing I love to do is throw a couple misfit cards in there. So I would throw maybe a sum that's like 23, so not any of the numbers, to figure out what that person will do when they get that card. And once your students are used to this misfit idea, you can actually make a place for them. Maybe they stand in the center of the room. And it's also fun because people in the corners will look at them and be like, hey, are you supposed to be with us? Because it's like a team ish game where they want to make sure everyone is in the right corner and other students are actually looking at their equation and checking theirs too to make sure that it really is a misfit. You can do this probably at least two times during your math warm up because this activity is relatively quick once students, you know, understand how to play and because it's very unlikely that they will receive the same exact equation before they go off to their corner. And if they do, they can raise their hand and just switch cards and practice addition again. Of course, I gave an addition example. Four corners can be used with anything, subtraction, place value. You could put up four, zero, three, and five and pass out shape cards and students would have to count up how many uh, sides or how many corners. You can play four corners with anything. All right, math warm up number two is called balance it. And this is again, another easy one that you can review different skills for. And it looks like this. I will simply draw this little seesaw type equation on here. And in this example, on one side, it says five plus six and the other side, it says nine plus four. Students will have to figure out, is this seesaw balanced? If it is not, how can we fix it? Once we come up with some ideas, we can ask, are there any other ways to fix this? And maybe we wanna combine addition and subtraction. Now, when I will show a balance it problem like that one as a math warm up, I do like to have students try to solve it either again with a partner quietly or independently first. That way they've already come up with their idea. Is it balanced, yes or no? And if it's not, how can they go ahead and fix it? Because during that sharing portion, if you just kind of dive in and ask somebody to share, it stifles students from thinking of ways they might have balanced it. 
and instead if you give them that think time first, then you can make a running list of different ways to balance the seesaw. Again, this is a very simple warm up activity that you can throw up on the board at the beginning of your lesson, kind of talk through all these math strategies, and it's an easy one to progress as your students learn more and more skills throughout the year. Math warm up number three is one of my favorites, and I've definitely shared it before over the years in these videos, but that is to use fix it cards. Now, I have a whole unit of fix it cards for first grade math problems, and here is a little picture of what some of them look like. What I love about these cards is students will have to take the knowledge that they already have and apply it by deciding what's actually wrong about this. This picture right here is under the measurement category, and I put this one on here to say what's wrong. The crayon is three paper clips long. So in this category, students are looking for a few different things. They'll want to make sure that the paper clips are lined up to the edge of the crayon, which it is over here at the point of the crayon, but then we can see that there's still some space, so it's actually a little bit longer than three paper clips. Not only will students tell me why it's wrong, but they're going to give me a strategy to fix it. Now look above it, some of this is covered up here, but this is one for geometry. It says, what's wrong? All these shapes have three corners and three sides. And I can already see by looking at some of those shapes that no, in fact, some of them have four corners and four sides. So students can tell me, oh, we need to change the wording of this to say all these shapes have either three corners and three sides or four corners and four sides, or we can simply remove those two square pieces to make it correct. Here is a number bond one where you see a 10 and it has a one and a 10 for the different parts, so students can determine how to fix it. Again, they could either fix the big 10 and turn it into 11, or they can change one of the part numbers to make it actually equal 10. There's always going to be a couple different ways that you could fix what's wrong in these cards. And above it, again, you can't see all the wording, but it says one grasshopper has six legs, so three grasshoppers have 15 legs. And again, students would have to figure out what is wrong with that problem and how can I fix it? Again, I have over 100 of those cards in different categories, and they're so easy because you can just throw them under a doc cam or throw them up on a smart board and have students probably run through two or three of them in about a five minute span to warm your class up before they learn some new math stuff. All right, math warm up number four that I love using with my students are quick images. Now, I love using quick images for number sense, and I actually did a whole video series about number sense activities, including quick images right here. But in today's example, I wanted to switch it up a little bit and show you another way to use quick images. Now, quick images are called quick images because you usually show a card for maybe one, two, three seconds, and then you put it down and students are supposed to explain what they saw and also explain how they figured it out. Now again, I shared it using uh, dot cards for students to group numbers and work on numeracy and number sense skills, but here I wanted to show you some other examples. So for geometry, I've done this in the past, I will hold up a card like this one for just a few seconds and then put it down. And students will have to tell me what they saw. I love this because students have to use their knowledge of different shapes. They are gonna use circles, triangles, but then also they're going to explain, you know, I saw a circle inside a triangle and I saw a smaller circle to the right of the triangle. They're going to need to use some different words, and I know in kindergarten, one of the math standards is being able to use those descriptive words on top, below, inside, to the right. So this is a fun way for them to practice that and also for them to review the names of their shapes. Now, when you're doing quick images, you will want to listen to students as they describe kind of what they saw and then have other students say if they saw the same thing or if they saw something slightly different. You'll really want to have a discussion around it before you show that card again to see if what they saw really matched up. It will also help you clarify any misconceptions that students may have. I also like using shape cards like this one right here, which I will throw up for again, one, two, three quick seconds and then put it down. Because in this one, there's a couple different ways students could describe what they are seeing, which reminds me again of those dot cards and the way they, they subitize the numbers. But here, some students might see a big rectangle with a triangle inside it, which would be true. Other students might say, oh, I saw three triangles with a smaller rectangle on the side. 
If a student doesn't end up saying, oh, I saw three triangles with a rectangle on the side, you could offer that up as a as something you saw. And then students would be like, what? I did not see three triangles. What is Mrs. Jones talking about? But then when they actually look back, they can recognize some different triangles and different shapes of triangles that they see within this quick image. Now over in the SJT math club, I actually have a whole section called number sense routines. And I do have those quick image dot cards that I talked about over the summer, but I think I'm going to create more of these uh, shape and geometry ones and I will put them in there as well. Actually, I think I'll put those under the geometry section, but next month be on the lookout for those if you are part of the club. And if you're not, you can check it out in the description. So there you have four different math warmups that are easy and fun to use in your K through two classroom. Now, if you are watching this video when it first comes out, you may be on your winter break and it is well deserved. So keep these ideas on the back burner or think of just some ways you can switch it up and use them as inspiration when you head back into your classroom this January. And of course, I always like to hear from you. So I wanna know, have you used any of these four different warmups in your own classroom? Which ones do you like? Which ones might you try? leave it down in the comments. As a quick recap, the four I shared are four corners, balance it, fix it cards, and quick images using shapes. As always, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you're notified of every new video I put out, which right now I'm sharing videos on Thursday and Sunday mornings. See you in the next one. Bye.